Hey everyone, this is just a uh, a recap of equations of motion in a linear fashion. So if you've done first year dynamics, which most of you would have, or first year physics, uh, you would know about the linear equations of motion. Now you may not be that familiar with how to derive them, but I'm just going to recap this and make sure that you've got the groundwork there. All right. The linear equations of motion come from our definitions of what displacement, velocity, and acceleration are and how they are all related. Now, kinematics deals with displacement, velocity, and acceleration without considering why there is displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So. Essentially, it deals with motion without the causes of motion. All right. In this ca in these cases, I'm going to do it so generally that you can solve basically any question that you get given to do with linear motion. Or, and later, we'll deal with angular motion as well. Okay. So, the first thing we'll say is def we'll define our linear quantities as being... S is displacement V is equivalent to S dot which is a time rate of change of displacement which is velocity and A is the time rate of change of velocity which is the time rate of change of the rate of change squared, oh, sorry, that's V dot, which equals S double dot, which is acceleration. Now, those can be expressed as differential elements divided by differential elements with respect to time. So, we can have V equals ds on dt a equals d squared s on dt squared which is also equal to um, it's also equal to dv on dt which is very important for deriving our equations of motion alright so without further ado we'll get into our equations of motion the first one is uh, we'll use we'll use this definition here that we've just done. So dv on dt equals a, and if we use separation of variables, which is just making each side in terms of one differential. So we'll make the left hand side in terms of d of v, so it's dv. We'll make the right hand side in terms of t, which is a dt. So if we integrate both of those sides with respect to these elements, so the left-hand side with respect to velocity, so v naught to v dv equal to the integral of t naught to t of a dt, we end up getting v minus v naught Oh. We end up getting v minus v naught is equal to a t minus t naught. Now, when t naught is naught, or if we assume that t naught is naught, this simply becomes a t. So that our first equation of motion is v equals v naught plus a t. Our second equation of motion is based on our first equation of motion and I'll show you why in just a second. The reason why now this is our second equation of motion we'll go V equals dS on dt and if we make, we, use, we apply that same separation of variables technique as I did in the first question, 
or the first derivation, we'll see that ds equals vdt, and if we integrate both sides with respect to the differentials, we end up getting s naught to s ds equals the integral from t naught to t of v dt. So we end up getting s minus s naught equals equals this integral in here. Now I'll, I'll keep it as the integral and you'll see why in a second. Because what we've got from our first equation was that v equals v naught plus at. If we then substitute that into this equation here we end up getting which equals like so, which means that we get v naught t plus a half a t squared minus v naught t naught plus a half a t naught squared. Now when t naught is naught, this term is zero. So we're going to take that example and use and make our displacement the subject so that s equals our initial displacement plus our initial velocity multiplied by time plus a half multiplied by acceleration times time squared okay now for our final equation of motion, we have to use the chain rule. And to do that, I'll show you how we do it. We'll do the first bit here. We'll say that acceleration equals dv on dx times, oh, d, dv on ds, sorry, dv on ds times ds on dt. And we can see that these two cancel out if we're finding the lowest, the lowest common denominator uh, <coughs> well they're just factors that cancel out because one's on the numerator one's on the denominator so we end up but we also know that ds on dt is v so we can express this as a equals v dv on ds and then we apply separation of variables again and then integrate with respect to displacement on the left hand side and velocity on the right hand side so we end up getting V squared on two and if we take the two to the other side we get two or well, we want to make V the subject firstly so we get two A S minus S naught and that becomes Uh, so if we make v the subject, or v squared the subject, we end up getting uh, 
this equation here, which is the third equation of motion. All right, that's all for this video. In the next one, we're going to cover angular, the angular equations of motion and angular components. Thanks for watching.